Geek Dungeon, the dungeon where we geek out on all things horror, thriller, mystery, and suspense. And this podcast episode is a little bit different. Uh, we're doing the one of our book author interviews in this episode. Uh, typically, I do those uh, things for the uh, YouTube channel, uh, so like a video, so you see my ugly mug uh, next to the author. Uh, but uh, through some uh, technical difficulties and issues, uh, we were not able to get the video aspect. Uh, so rather than just uh, listening to this on a, you know, just a you know, photograph of me or the photograph of the author or anything, uh, I figured we just let's just do this in a podcast format. So uh, and it'll give you, you know, the the heads up that uh, hey, we have other things that. Uh, I put out that uh, are not in podcasts, basically the the videos on our YouTube channel of my interviews with uh, some authors. So uh, if you haven't already, go check that stuff out and uh, just go to the link tree. Uh, I'll have those, uh, I'll have that uh, posted in the show notes of this episode and you'll be able to go to, you know, the YouTube and uh, the the website and the the Twitter X thing and uh, and the, the Patreon thing, uh, you know, so, yeah, so all those uh, websites and uh, links are in the link tree uh, in the show notes of this episode. So without any further ado, let's go on to our interview with a person that you may have read some of his articles if you uh, read uh, Bloody Disgusting. And uh, so let's get to that interview in the dungeon right now. All right, welcome back to the dungeon, and uh, this time we have another uh, very special guest. We have uh, Jason Jenkins, and uh, how are you doing, Jason? <laughs> hey, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it, sir. Uh, no problem, no problem. And uh, you are uh, one of the writers with uh, Bloody Disgusting, right? Uh, yes, yeah, I've written for Bloody Disgusting on and off since, I believe, 2018. I uh, I had a handful of columns that I wrote for them, primarily during the uh, uh, the apocalypse or uh, the pandemic, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I had four kind of uh, recurring columns, uh, probably the most popular of which was Phantom Limbs. So uh, ever since I've been working on the book, I haven't been writing for them that much, but uh you know, I, I'd still like to think of them as home, and uh, I hope to get back to uh, to writing for them again someday in the future. Oh yes, uh, we 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 love uh, bloody uh, we love bloody disgusting here to, uh, at the dungeon. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, we're really uh, appreciative of them of uh, being the U.S. distributors for uh, Terrifier Two, which uh, helped get that movie out to the, the theater and stuff. So we really we really are grateful to that. Uh, but yeah, they're getting into uh, phantom limbs now. Yeah, this so this book is uh, basically a, uh, I guess a, a manifestation of the, the 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 articles and and things that you wrote for Bloody Disgusting, right? Over a number of years. Yes, yeah. I um, it's funny. It all kind of came about by accident. I uh, I think in the early days of 2020, before the world ended, um, that Candyman trailer had hit for the Nia da Costa film, the, uh, the spiritual mm-hmm. sequel that Jordan Peele had written and, or co-written and had produced. And, um, you know, I saw the trailer, thought the movie looked great, and had remembered that Bernard Rose, the gentleman who directed the very first film, that he had developed a sequel on his own that, for whatever reason, you know, never made it to the screen. And I knew him from Twitter. I reached out and asked him if uh, he wouldn't mind talking at length about what exactly that movie was going to be. And he, uh, he delighted me by saying yes. So we spent about an hour chatting about it. Not only, you know, I was primarily, if I'm being honest, I was primarily interested in... 
sort of looking at what story was going to be told with that sequel. And he was, uh, he was kind enough to go into its backstory, you know, uh, how he had gone about developing it and what went into it. And then the story that it would have told and why it ultimately didn't happen. And it was a lengthy article when I was proud to have had a hand in, uh, creating and putting up on bloody disgusting. And, I thought that was pretty much it. I, I didn't expect to do anything else beyond that. And there was uh, there was this reader who uh, chimed in in the comments sections uh, section rather, and he said something like, "I wish somebody would make a book of all of these unmade movies. I would buy it in an instant." And I thought, you know, to myself, like a ah, book. You know, I don't know that anybody would read that, but you know, maybe a column. So, uh, you know, I, I started writing down all of these various movies that I had been curious about over the years, you know, things that had been announced and for whatever reason never came to fruition. And uh, I think the second one that I uh, did was My Bloody Valentine 3D Part 2. Uh, Todd Farmer, the screenwriter, he was kind enough to do my podcast Scream Addicts back in the day. And I reached out to him and asked him if he would uh, he would chat about that film, much as Bernard Rose did Candyman, where we covered the origins of the project, the story it would have told and why it didn't happen. He did. And I realized if this was going to be a column, I needed to have a name for it. And at first, you know, the, the, the sort of suggestions were that we keep it simple and immediately recognizable as to what the column was, you know, lost sequels or, you know, unmade horror films or something like yeah, that. Some, and some obvious, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I just, I wanted something a little snappier yeah. and, uh, you know, I was taking a long walk one day and I was like, you know, I've done sequels up until this point, you know, Candyman 2 and My Bloody Valentine 3D Part 2. So this notion struck me of these these extensions to a franchise that don't actually exist, you know, these extremities that aren't actually there. And I just hit upon the idea, you know, phantom sounds spooky and phantom limbs are a thing. And that kind of sounds like what these are. Unfortunately, in doing that, it totally limited my scope to who. Uh, <laughs> to just doing like uh, sequels and spinoffs and remakes and reboots and whatnot. But, uh, you know, so there have been quite a few horror movies. In fact, I've actually gone down the line once I, uh, I should say after the column got rolling, I went through like loads of old Fangoria teletypes and uh, terror teletypes to see these movies that had been announced and had never gotten made. And, I, I made sort of this master list that is pages and pages long of all of these unmade horror films. And I would get excited about seeing a title that I really wanted to write about. And then I realized, oh, wait, I can't. This isn't a phantom limb. It's not a sequel. It's not a it's not a remake. It doesn't quite fit. So. Um, hmm. So, yeah, I, I pretty much kept myself sane during the pandemic by. You know, I got an IMDb Pro account and I reached out to loads of different writers and filmmakers and, you know, just basically ran down all these stories and put them up. I wrote about 50 articles for Bloody Disgusting in that time. And at some point near the end of that run, it, it occurred to me that that reader's original notion of, you know, th there needing to be a book it seemed to make a little more sense to me. So I decided to pursue it and, uh, I, I had actually pitched bloody disgusting on potentially publishing it. And at the time, it, you know, they were very busy. They had just been taken over by Cynodyme and, uh, or acquired, I should say taken over sounds, um, I don't know, ominous, very, uh, pretty aggressive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I did. I didn't get it that way. Uh, but yeah, they had been acquired by Cynodyme and they were, uh, you know, they were looking to release movies like Terrifier 2, and they were looking to, uh, you know, start at their streaming service, which uh, became Screambox, and they're doing magnificent things with that, uh, but they weren't quite ready to get into publishing, so I, I still really wanted to do a book. You know, I'm getting older, and I kind of want to just create something tangible, you know, to pass along to people, uh, you know, much like, you know, when I was a teenager, I grew up on so many different horror nonfiction books that I would check out at my local library and just keep my nose on them. And, you know, uh, when I should have been paying attention in class <laughs> every period, but, uh, 
you know, so I, I, I just wanted to contribute in some small part and do that. So I really wanted to pursue the idea of Phantom Limbs as a book. And so I found Encyclopocalypse. Uh, you know, they've been doing marvelous things with their nonfiction books and their novelizations and whatnot. So uh, they've been fantastic to work with, both Mark and Sean. And, um, you know, hopefully this first volume that's coming out April 2nd will be the first of many. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, it's a pretty hefty uh, volume just uh, just for the, the first one. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, like you said, you start about uh, uh, start about Psycho Two. Uh, let me just run down some of the chapters: uh, Halloween Six, Resident Evil, Wishmaster Three, um, Race with the Devil. I remember that. I remember seeing that in theaters when I was a little kid. Such uh, a good film. <laughs> it was uh, the Hitcher. Uh, Let's see, thirst, uh, the 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 wrath of the gods, people under the stairs, the Hellraiser, something like Jigsaw, Chopping Mall, uh, Silent Night, uh, the Texas Chainsaw. Uh, is the, now I I read I read I think it was in Fangoria that was talking about the the uh, unmade Ch- Texas Chainsaw sequel. Is is um is that the one? I I, wonder they... I don't think so. The Texas Chainsaw 2 that I wrote about was, uh, it was written by Scott Malam, who wrote Mother's Day, the Darren Bousman film. He was um, contracted to write a sequel to Texas Chainsaw 3D, that 2013 reboot. Okay. And so far okay. as I know, nobody else has written about this. Because I I had no idea the movie existed or was going to exist. Uh, you know, we went from Texas Chainsaw 3D. You know, there was a mention that there might be sequels, but ultimately it wound up being a prequel called Leatherface that came out, I believe, in 2017. Um, I, I just happened to know Scott Malam from Twitter, and I reached out to him one day, and I was like, hey, I'm doing this book. I know you've talked at length about your unmade Halloween film for that great book, uh, Taking Shape 2, which is about all the Halloween sequels that didn't get made. And I was like, but would you have anything else you would want to discuss? And his response was, I don't know. I've worked on a few things, maybe. Um, uh, I wrote a Texas Chainsaw sequel, if you would like to talk about that. And I was like, yes, I would. Yes, I would. (laughs) Uh, and you know what? It's funny. I am not the biggest fan of Texas Chainsaw 3D, but his script for Texas Chainsaw 2 is so damn good, it actually made the previous film a little bit better to me. I think it would have improved. If they had actually made that film, I, I, I think it would have uh, you know, lifted that franchise up from the uh, you know, sort of the gutter that Texas Chainsaw mm-hmm. 3D put it in, I think. Yeah, and, and and just getting into the the whole theme of the the phantom limbs, uh, I like how each chapter is set up the same way. Uh, I mean, you got you got you have it divided up in pre-op, surgery, uh, phantom limbs, and then tingles. And you know, like with pre-op, uh, it's you basically give a rundown of what the uh, I guess the the original movie was about uh, what the, the sequel was going to be based on. Uh, uh, surgery, you get into the actual people that you interview, the writers or filmmakers or whatever, uh, and what their proposed sequel was. Um, and then the, the Phantom Limbs part, uh, you uh, you go into... I, I, don't, I don't know if you call it spoil, spoiler imp, uh, territory because <laughs> it's like you're spoiling things that... Has a, <laughs> hasn't been uh, produced yet, but you basically go through a synopsis of what that that script or that movie was was going to be, and then the tingles is uh, what uh, what went wrong, what what happened, what uh, why didn't get the uh, the green light, and um, and, and it's, I think uh, I mean if if you're a fan of horror movies. Uh, this will be a great book if you haven't. Uh, if people are not familiar with the the, the bloody disgusting, uh, you know, uh, articles, uh, to have a book uh, again like that. That like that reader said, you know, if, if this was a physical book, yeah. Uh, I mean, if if you're a horror fan, definitely this could even be good for uh, like a uh, just a film buff, a film history buff. 
uh, just general. It's like, okay, well, you know, here's a, here's a textbook in a sense that deals just with the horror uh, genre. And uh, as as I was reading the the reading this uh, book, um, it had like a double edged sword for me because number one, you when you go when you read about all the the obstacles and the hoops that people need to jump through just to uh, get something in front of somebody. Uh, somebody's going to make a decision to, to green light this thing or to actually put it in production. What they had to go through just to get the movie made. And on the other side of the coin, like you were saying to you about the, the, the Texas Chainsaw movie, it's like, Okay, they had this really great uh, workout, this, this workup of what the, the, the movie was going to be about. And they said no to it. <laughs> you know? And yeah. when, as I was, I was reading some through like, uh, like some of the tingle uh, aspects of the, the chapter, it's like when you're, uh, when you're interviewing these people, I mean, some of these people actually called some people out. Because like, okay, yeah, this person... <laughs> didn't like my political stances so he didn't like me so he just said f you and you know that was it um but yeah but uh, yeah that's uh, just overall just the way the chapters are, are laid out where you have the, those uh those four uh sections is uh for an OCD person like me, that that really helps because I could go to each, <laughs> I could go to any chapter I want. Okay, well, you know, I I want to find out what the hell happened with uh, such and such. I go right, I could go right to the chapter, and uh, you know, go right to the tingle section. Or it's like, what what was that part in that? What was the, what they proposed in that movie that I could go straight to the you know the the phantom limbs limb section? But uh, yeah, that that's. Yeah, kudos to you that be, be put on now. Now, you uh, what what chapters uh, did you write for the specifically for the book that was not part of the uh, the the bloody disgusting uh, articles? Um. Well, first, thank you very much for the kind words. I appreciate that. I uh, you know I I that sort of structure was not uh, put into play until the book, you know, that's not something that I did for the, uh, the column on bloody disgusting. So thank you for, for pointing that out. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad that that, uh, that sort of satisfied your own OCD because I, I'm totally OCD as well. And when I actually started drafting the book, I was like, I need this to be cleaner. I need this to be a <laughs> bit more neat. You know what I mean? Um, and, and yeah, you're right. I mean, it's I, I think it hopefully will be fascinating to, you know, the general fan who just wants to know what these stories were going to be and can just skip right to the Phantom Limbs parts, you know. But in addition to being about horror movies or rather horror movies that never were, um, you know, it's also kind of just about the the horror of trying to get a movie made. And, you know, some of the reasons that these films didn't get made are heartbreaking. You're right. Sometimes they're political reasons. Sometimes it's just a matter of money falling through. Sometimes it's a falling out between people. Uh, sometimes, you know, and there are a couple of cases in the book that are like this, you know, it's a real life tragedy that mm -hmm. actually sees an end to some of these projects. Um, you know, I wrote about one in their uh, film called Cineplex. that was a remake of the uh, 80s film Anguish. And this was yeah. a movie that is set primarily in a movie theater. There are violent events that occur in a movie auditorium. And it was all set to go. Ghost House was producing it. The gentleman who wrote the When a Stranger Calls remake had written the script. Uh, it's a fantastic idea, a great story, a great spin on that original movie. And I think it would have been a worthy remake. And right before they were due to get the green light a couple of months out, uh, the Aurora movie theater shootings yeah. occurred. And, you know, it as noted in the chapter, the screenwriter, Jake Wade Wall, he pointed out, you know, on Thursday it was a live project. And the next day it was dead and nobody was going to touch it. You know, sometimes that happens. Uh, sometimes the creative them, creatives themselves, you know, there was uh, uh, a series of films uh, dealing with a uh, great slasher character called Chrome Skull. Uh, it began with Laid the Rest and then Chrome Skull Laid the Rest 2. There was going to be a third film and unfortunately the director passed away at a, a very, very young age. And it's just, uh, it's tragic, you know. Um, 
but you know, so maybe I, I can see, you know, the casual fan, but also the, uh, the fellow film nerd, you know, each wanting to read the chapters for different reasons, perhaps. Uh, I, I hope that's the case. Certainly. Um, it's funny. I was just talking to somebody, uh, on another podcast about how, you know, part of the appeal about reading about unmade movies to me anyway, is, you know, it's kind of a collaborative thing in a way. You know, if you pick up a novel, if you're anything like me, and I've heard other people discuss it much this way too, but if you pick up a novel and start reading it, you start casting the roles in your head. You know, the <laughs> the the movie theater screen comes to life in the back of your mind. You know, the projector starts flickering, and then you make your version of what this story is. You turn it into a film in your head, you know, yeah. and in reading about these unmade films, you know, you kind of do the same thing. You, you collaborate with these people that tried to get this movie made and it didn't quite happen. But in reading about the synopses and checking out those spoilers, you know, hopefully you can kind of put two and two together and you can kind of imagine what that film might have been for yourself. And, uh, it's painful. I got to tell you, because there are so many projects that sounded so damned cool. Uh, that sadly we, we never got to see and we never will probably. Mm. Uh, now back to your uh, other question, as far as, uh, uh, which chapters are new and which come from bloody disgusting. In fact, the book is 100% new material. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So if you go to the bloody disgusting, uh, site and you search phantom limbs or my name, it will bring up all of those articles. There are 50 exactly. I think the book covers 25 entirely new, well, new to the column, uh, new to phantom limbs projects. So nothing repeats from the, uh, the, the, the web column. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, I, and I, I hope people enjoy it. You know, I, I hope that people read the book and, uh, really dig it. I hope they look forward to more volumes, but, uh, I, I would love it if they go back and they seek out those articles too. Um, I, I wrote a lot for bloody disgusting phantom limbs and otherwise. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope those articles stay online and available to everyone forever. You know, I, I, I wrote a lot of really, I, well, I should say I wrote about a lot of really exciting projects that, again, sadly never got made. I mentioned Texas Chainsaw 3D a moment ago. Um, for that website, I wrote about two entirely separate Texas Chainsaw projects that eventually became Texas Chainsaw 3D. And even though I'm not too keen on the film that resulted, the projects that were originally developed are absolutely amazing. Mm. And uh, and they're just sitting there. They're sitting there for fans to discover if they haven't yet. And uh, I, I hope they do. Uh, definitely. Now, now, one of the things that I thought about as I, I was uh, reading these things uh, is okay. Uh, the 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 writers or the 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 movie creators and and uh, go into these studios or whoever they were wanting to to put this thing on on screen, and uh, they were shot down. But uh, do you think any of these would go to like a, a, just another route, maybe like an independence uh, movie studio route, or do, do some, you know, if if you know, one path didn't work, uh, to try a different path and, and hopefully get, uh, get it on screen that way. You know, I sure wish that would be the case. Um, that is part of what tingles kind of covers, you know? Uh, and again, I, I didn't really break it down in the sections in the, uh, the web column, but you know, I did keep it pretty simple. It's, you know, the history of the franchise or sort of the context or what comes after, you know, how the project came to be, what story it would have told, why it didn't happen. And then at the end, I would tend to ask, is there any chance this might still happen? And generally, even for the most promising, uh, project, you know, there are some that, were big studio movies that the studio lost interest in and they went a different route and they've already made other stuff. And, you know, it's, it, I think it's kind of hopeless then, you know, you can't really expect, uh, it, nobody's going to make Halloween six. Now that we've had several movies beyond Halloween six, you know, you can't really make a movie about a teenage Jamie Lloyd at this point. Um, or maybe you could, I don't know. Um, but it's doubtful. Uh, whereas with some of the indie films, 
you know, you, you would think that there would be more leeway that maybe if the right person reads about the project or, you know, if the right person finds that script someday, maybe, possibly, it could get made. But generally, I find that the creatives feel, at least, that once a project's time has sort of come and gone, that's kind of it for it, you mm. know? That said, there was one case uh, with a column where, and I probably shouldn't say which screenwriter and which project, but I had covered an unmade sequel to kind of a popular uh, mid-aughts remake. And, you know, he, he had a great idea for how to continue that franchise, and it just kind of didn't happen. But the cool thing about the conceit of the follow-up is that you could wait years. You could wait a couple of decades if you wanted, and that story would still work. You could let your leads age as much as you wanted to, and you could still cast them in this follow-up. And as I understand it, in writing the article and putting it out there, it came across the uh, the lead actor's sort of desk, as it were, and they read about it, and they called the writer up. I was told this after the fact called the writer up and they were like, why aren't we doing this? And so they both kind of got together and they've been kicking up a little dust with the studio and they're hoping to get it made. You know, I would be delighted if that actually <laughs> happened. Uh, one, because it's a great idea Two, because the creative in question is a super nice guy. And three, I would just like to see the movie. Um, there's a weird case. And again, I don't think I can mention the project yet anyway. Right. But there is a chapter in the book on a long in development film that it was a sequel. It was developed. Uh, fantastic idea. Uh, great high concept movie would have been really thrilling. And again, it was one of those cases where it, a real life tragedy sort of ended the prospects of this movie being made. I interviewed the 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 creatives in question, they talked at length about, you know, the, the story and why it didn't happen. And, you know, they were sort of, when I asked them, I was like, you know, so is there a chance this will ever get made someday? And they were like, maybe, maybe not. You know, uh, it, it was never considered a fully dead project, but after that tragedy, you know, it's, you know, it, it doesn't seem likely. Right. I I wrote the chapter, it went into the book, and before I got the book, actually, I'm sorry, after I got the book to the publisher, but before it went to print, uh, it was announced in the trades that the film is, in fact, being made now. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a wildly different version, as I understand it. It's gone through several rewrites since the version that I wrote about. Uh, but nevertheless, it is uh, it is a phantom limb that's kind of a cheat now because it's no longer a phantom limb. It does it will exist in about a year's time. So, okay. uh, but yeah, you know, and I can't. I I hope people read that chapter and find that amusing when they uh, they eventually run across the movie out there someday. Okay, so that'll, that'll be like a little um, uh, Easter egg. Uh, get, get the book, read the chapters, and uh, keep your eye out on the theaters and. Uh, trailers and stuff and see if you can figure out what movie we just talked about exactly it'll uh i'll say this it'll keep the same title so okay it, it won't be hard for people to figure out i don't think all right <laughs> excellent uh well uh yeah so phantom limbs coming out on april 2nd uh 2024 if you're listening to this uh 10 years down the road or whatever i don't know <laughs> <laughs> my channel will probably be shut down by then I'm sure <laughs> but, but uh, check them out Jason thank you so much for uh, sort of coming on I, I appreciate it uh, we, we, we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here so uh, rather I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on the YouTube channel but uh, it will be like a, a little still picture otherwise uh, my viewers will just have to look at my ugly mug the whole time and, and that's not going to get a lot of views so I will put, oh. <laughs> put it as a podcast 
<laughs> I, I would not, sir. I would not net you many more views with with my own face. So, uh, <laughs> so, but thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I had a blast chatting with you, and I uh, thank you for the kind words about the book. And yeah, I I, I hope your viewers uh, uh, elect to check it out. And if they do, I hope they comment underneath this video to let me know what they thought of it. Great. Now, if people want to find out more of what you're doing uh, or uh, uh, follow you on, I don't know, uh, Twitter. I still call it Twitter. Uh, Blue Sky, are you on your know, Blue Sky yet? Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of a part of all the social medias out there, but if I'm being honest, I'm still only active on uh, Twitter. Yes, I'm calling it Twitter. I refuse yeah. to call it X, Elon. It's not going to yeah. happen. It's Twitter. <laughs> Uh, I am on Instagram rarely. Um, so on Twitter, I'm at Jinx1981. That's at J-I-N-X-1981. You can find me on Instagram. I'm at Jinx740941. And I do apologize for all of the numbers. Um, y- you can find me on Blue Sky. You can find me on Threads. Uh, you cannot find me on Facebook. I, I am not a Facebook guy. I've never done it. I, I, I don't plan to ever do Facebook. So I apologize for everyone <laughs> uh, hey, that's okay searching for me there. <laughs> <laughs> well so, so, somebody out there named Jason Jenkins was like where in the fuck am I getting all these friend requests <laughs> <laughs> it's not me I swear <laughs> Just uh, just look for the jack o' lantern face and the the name Jinx and that'll be me. So. Okay, <laughs> excellent. All right, and then we'll put the uh, the links uh, to order the book uh, in the show notes of this episode. And uh, I'm glad to see there's going to be an audio at Audible. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, they've gotten. A, I don't think they've announced it yet, but they got a fantastic gentleman to. Uh, to read the book. He has an amazing voice and uh, I, I think he'll do a, uh, a marvelous job at it. I can't wait to listen to it myself. Uh, excellent. Yeah. That I've, uh, I'm, I, I used to be, I used to be against like audio books cause uh, being a, a book file is like, a, there's just something about the, the, the feel of the pages and stuff like that. Uh, but as, as you get up into my age, uh, my eyesight starts going, and it's like, you know what? There's, I think there's a lot, of said to, a lot to be said about audiobooks. So, yeah. So I'm glad it's going to be on Audible. It will help uh, uh, justify my $15 a month or however much it is so, <laughs> to, 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 to listen to the, the, the book. And uh, But, uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, let me just being able, being able to read the book uh uh, advance that would be that's uh that's great so thank you so much well jason uh i'm glad you survived this uh, particular torture uh, around here in in the dungeon uh he didn't do too bad huh <laughs> so i'm glad we i'm i'm i'm, I'm sure we didn't uh, leave any permanent damage on you uh so uh again uh if and if uh volume two comes out Please, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me or uh, to, to Sean and uh, see about uh, getting you on to, to find out what's going on there again and find out some more uh, Phantom Limbs uh, movies that didn't quite get the cut for some reason or another. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Sir, it was a pleasure. Thank you again. All right. Take care. All right. Have a great evening.